G'day guys, in this video I've got a fairly challenging relative motion problem for you. A disc rotates with an angular velocity omega, which is 8 radians per second. Find the absolute velocity of the remotely controlled slider at this instant. So what's going on here? We've got this remotely controlled slider, which I've labeled point A, and we need to find the absolute velocity of this guy, considering we know it's constrained to move with inside of this slot, and we know the disc itself is rotating. We're given some information about L, and we're given some dimensions, and we know that omega is acting in the counterclockwise direction. This should be all you need to solve for the absolute velocity of point A. So have a shot at this yourself first, and then come back when you're done. Okay, well, let's begin by writing down the velocity equation when we're dealing with rotating reference frames. It's the velocity of A is equal to the velocity of B plus V rel plus the velocity of P relative to B. Now, VA is what we're trying to find, and so in order to find that, we need to find these three terms just here. So let's begin by discussing what point B is. B is the point where we choose to place our rotating reference frame, and I think a good candidate, and let me draw an orange, I think a good candidate is right here. This will be where I call point B, and this will be a good corresponding axis. I will call X, Y like this. Now, because I have to find point B to be smack bam in the middle of this disk, what is the velocity of B at this instant? Well, of course, it's going to be zero, right? Point B is in the middle of the disk, and the disk, well, the very middle of the disk isn't moving, so, if we, so VB is zero. Now, what about VREL? VREL is the velocity of our slider relative to our rotating object. Or another way to think about that is, it's the velocity of A as if omega was zero. And so if that's the case, you can tell that the velocity of A will be perfectly upwards at this instant. So we can actually draw this vector above like this, like that. And we actually know the velocity of the slider relative to our rotating object. It's just going to be L dot or DLDT, which is 400 millimeters per second. So we'll just write that as L dot just here. Now let's talk about the hardest term to analyze. This is the velocity of P relative to B. Now point B is, sorry, now point P is a point which is coincident with A, but is actually attached to the, to the rotating object. So for clarity's sake, I'm going to draw P here like this. It's a point which has the same position as A, but is actually attached to the, to the rotating object. And so we can find the velocity of P relative to B by noting that it must undergo circular motion. If we were to draw this right here, this distance, which I'm going to label R, we know that the velocity of P relative to B would actually look like this, right? This would be the velocity vector just here, right? And you can tell its magnitude will be R omega from circular motion formulas. So we know that this velocity vector will actually look like this and will have a magnitude of R omega like that. Now, in order to know everything we need to know about this vector, we need to find out what this distance R is. And we also need to find out at what angle this vector is acting. So let's consider the angle first. Let's define this angle here, theta, like that. If we define theta like that, that means we know that this is going to be 90 minus theta, which means we know this right here is going to be theta, like that. So I can even draw a theta like this, okay? And we can find theta from trigonometry. We know tan theta is going to be equal to L divided by 200. So we can say that theta is going to be equal to inverse tan inverse 10 of L divided by 200. And if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 26.57 degrees. Okay, so that's theta sorted. Now let's talk about R. R is this distance just here, and we can find that from Pythagoras. We know that R is going to be equal to the square root of L squared plus 200. L squared plus 200 squared. And if you um, plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 223.6 millimeters like that. And so we're so close to solving this problem. We now have a good understanding of each of these velocity terms. Now we just need to sum them up. So to do that, let's deconstruct each of these vectors into i and j components and then sum them all up. So VA is going to be equal to, well, VB, which is going to be 0, 0, it's got no velocity in the x or y direction. And we're going to be adding that to VREL, 
right, which we showed earlier was purely in the in the y direction based off this axis. So it's going to be zero l dot like that. Or I can even write in the value of 400 if we like. And now we need to add that to this value right here. Now this is a little bit of a tricky one because this vector has components in both the i and j direction. The i direction will be negative, so it'll be minus r omega um, sine theta, sine theta, and the j component will be minus r omega cosine theta. Note that direction is important. X and Y have been defined positive in these directions, and the horizontal and vertical components here are acting the opposite of those directions, so they must be negative. So now it becomes a simple game of plugging in the numbers to solve for VA, so let's do that. VA, now we can say, is going to be equal to 0 plus 0 minus r omega sine theta, which is going to be minus 800, if you just focus on this top row. And this bottom row is going to be 0 plus 400 minus r omega cosine theta, which is going to be minus 1200 millimeters per second. So we have found it. We have found the absolute velocity of our slider A. Now before you go, I want to tell you what the importance of these negative signs mean. It basically means that if this is our slider just here, it means that the absolute velocity of our slider is minus 800, so in this direction, and minus 1200 in the j direction like that, meaning that our velocity vector would actually look like something like this. This would be the velocity of A, like that. So I hope you can understand that at a conceptual level and also at this level just here. I hope that made sense, guys, and I hope you really learned something. Cheers.